Postura yeni. Moje mege Monte Barlow. In some pastor scoop nosti novo zelenje. Uh, oprostiti moj slovensko je za nič. In to je razlog da bom govoril u angleščini s slovenskimi podnapisi. Uh, oprostite. So, this has been a tough year for everyone. For some, it has been the worst year uh, of their lives. And I want to take some time right now to bring us maybe a message of hope. And there's no better place to find a message of hope than right here in the Bible. Uh, this book is an ultimate message of hope. In this book, we learn about the great love that God has for humankind. We learn about the greatest gift that was ever given. We just celebrated that. Jesus, God in the flesh, born as a baby and sent to earth to be our Savior. He accomplished that by his death for us in our place, the innocent dying for the guilty. We learn about people's lives being changed by accepting his payment by faith. We learn about the beauty and blessing of a real relationship with God in spite of circumstances. In just a few days, we'll turn the calendar page to year 2021. And I think I can speak for most people around the world by saying that we hope that 2021 will be different from 2020. I'll even go a step further and say better than year 2020. But a, a serious thing to consider is this. What if it isn't better? What if things become even more difficult? How do we move forward? There was a man in the Bible who went through very difficult circumstances in his life. His name was Paul. Maybe you remember about him. We've spoken about him many times. He was a bright young talent in the profession of religion. He was most certainly, certainly moving to the upper levels of religion. He, he was destined to be a very rich and powerful man in religion. But then he met God. He thought the God that he thought he was worshiping. And after that, his life was never the same again. And he had never experienced after that such peace, real peace. His life was not an easy one, far from it. The Bible tells us of his many adventures, shipwrecks, beatings, imprisonments, even being stoned and left for dead. I think we can all agree that 2020, as difficult as it has been, uh, was not that bad maybe for us. So I believe we can learn something and maybe, just maybe, get a little perspective from this man who walked with God, and maybe we could see how he dealt with difficult circumstances. So here in Philippians chapter 4, we find Paul in prison. And he's writing one of the last letters that he's ever going to write. And he's wrapping up this last letter that, that he's going to write. Maybe just like we do, after writing a long letter to friends or a long message to friends, we would end the letter by saying perhaps some of the most important things that we want them to remember. So read along with me here in Philippians chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. It says, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were careful but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens me. So here, Paul is ending his letter, and in these verses, he is challenging these people who are receiving this letter. Verse 9, the challenge says, Now, all that you have learned from me, these things that you have received and heard, um, but not just that, most importantly, what you have seen in me, those are the things that you should do. Why? Well, according to verse 9, that brings the peace of God. What more could we possibly need in our life more than the peace of God? Now, wait a minute. So, this guy has been through all these terrible circumstances, and he can talk about peace? How is this possible? Well, we learn exactly how Paul does it in verses 11 and 12. He first explains that the peace that he had did not come naturally. Envying and complaining are as natural to man as weeds are growing up out of the earth. You don't need to plant weeds. They grow quite naturally, and in the same way, nobody needs to be taught to complain. It comes naturally as well. But the valuable things in life must be planted and cared for. If you want a good harvest, you must take care of your trees. For Paul, it was something that he had to learn. Or maybe it's better to say he had to be taught these things. But the lesson was not wasted on Paul. What he had learned was so valuable to him and useful in his life that God had planned on him. So it was clear here that Paul had learned some things in his walk with God. One of those things that he had learned was this. In whatever position he finds himself, that he would be content. And he explores this idea deeper in verse 12. Paul says that he knows uh, both of these positions in life, how to live in difficulty as well as plenty. Though the circumstances in life may be going up and down, uh, from his perspective, his view would be one of contentment, right? Steadiness. I, from Paul's perspective, I'm not affected when I have plenty of resources or if I have no resources. And he states it here in three different ways, three different contrasts. He knows how to be abased and how to abound. He knows how to be full and to suffer need. And, and, and how to be hungry and abound and be full. So we could say these highs and lows. But whether it was a high or a low, Paul's attitude was contentment stayed the same. He didn't allow himself to get too high or too low. And that's how he was able to make it. He continues here by saying, in every place and in all situations. So that really gives us a clear picture of the entire spectrum of situations. It seems clear that there was not a situation where this lesson that Paul had learned was not useful. You see, there are lessons in life that are useful, maybe even life-saving, but they can only be used or implemented in certain situations. Say, for instance, taking the time to learn to swim can save your life when you're in the ocean. But it's totally useless if you're in the desert. So all lessons are not equally useful. This lesson, though, that Paul had learned was found to be very useful in every place and in every situation. That would seem to make this lesson... Uh, helpful to a greater number of people. And that is the exact reason why Paul wants to share it with these people that he loved in this church at Philippi. So God had taught him, and he felt it was very important to share that lesson with others. It is in this lesson today that I, 
I want to present to us the year 2020, as we said before, was full of difficulties. We could say many lows. We don't yet know what 2020 is going to bring to us. It could bring better circumstances. Sadly, it could also bring worse circumstances. We need to find a solid foundation like Paul found for these troubling times, these uncertain times. It brings to my mind the parable that Jesus told his followers at the end of his message in Matthew chapter 7. Let me read this. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Jesus' words, he says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hears these saying of mine, and does them not, shall be likened to a, um, a, a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. So we've got two houses here, one built on the rock, which did not fall because it was founded on the rock. And we've got one built on the sand, which when the rains and the troubling times came, fell. So if we reject the truth of God, it's like we're building a house on sand that cannot withstand the rains that will come troubling times. That would be foolish. The people who heard the story in Jesus' day knew it would be foolish to build a house on sand. Because in spite of what we think about Israel, it's not a landscape of desert sand everywhere. The only place you find sand in Israel is in a wadi. Now, a wadi is a dry riverbed. It can remain dry for long periods of time, but when the rains come, it can turn into a fast-flowing river. So only a fool would build a house there. A wise man will always build his house on the rock where it is safe. If we build our lives on the solid rock of the truth of God, the house will stand firm regardless of what happens on the outside. If our attitude is based on the outward circumstances, then we will continue to be most miserable because the circumstances of life are always going up and down. But if we find a way to live outside of the circumstances, with a, with a view toward inward peace, we find contentment in spite of what is going on around us. This is what is needed. In times of uncertainty, we need a rock. That rock is Jesus. It was for Paul. Look at verse 13. He tells us, in spite of all the ups and downs, Paul says, I can do all things, but it doesn't come through me or my own strength. It comes through Christ who gives him strength. <coughs> that same strength, that same rock, is available to you and I. Just as importantly as having strength is having peace in times of trouble or uncertainty. Paul, going through his own troubling and uncertain time, again, he was in prison as he writes this letter. And he wants to assure them about the availability of peace. Philippians 4, look at verses 6 and 7, and then we'll read verse 9 again. He says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, 
let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So here in, uh, in verse 9, he says, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and then the peace of God shall be with you. You want peace? Here it is. The peace in troubling times is available to you, but it only comes from God. When He is your rock, He is also your peace. Your peace in good times or troubling times. Paul teaches that you can find contentment in whatever situation that you're currently in right now, but it comes through Christ. All the circumstances may be raging around you, but you can be at peace. Contentment is not the same as happiness. You see, happiness depends on the happenings, what is going on around you. It is very dependent on circumstances. In contentment, there is an element in, of peace in spite of the happenings. And that only happens with God's grace in your life. Do you have that? Do you want that? We would love to help you find peace and contentment in your life. True and real peace and contentment. It doesn't come from a bottle or a pill. It comes from a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And the Bible is very clear about how we come to a relationship with Jesus. And we would be very happy to show you what the Bible says. Be very careful about a church that says, just do what our church tells you to do. Read the Bible for yourself. It is very clear. And we can help point you to the, what the Bible says. If you want peace to start this new year, it is available to you. Who knows what this year is going to bring us? If you have the peace that comes from God, you'll be ready no matter what comes your way. Can we pray for you? Let us know. Uh, let us know how we can help you, and we will do our very best. Send us a message. We can only help you if you let us know. Now next week, we're going to return back to the message series from the letter uh, to the Romans. And I hope we'll see you then. But until then, may God bless you and keep you safe. Srichno Novoleto.